Three. I, this is my third time trying to get this right. I, I do not know all these stupid classes and shit. <clears throat> so I always mix them up. Dave's RV Life is looking for a Class C, okay? The Class C, which is, it's an RV, but it's not a super big RV, okay? Got it? It's bigger than a Class B, which is like a camper van, which uh, D Nomadic Dometic just recently got. And it's, uh, it's uh, definitely smaller than a Class A, which is what he has now with Betty the Bounder. So what he wants to do is kind of go for the middle one, you know, like the three bears... You know, one's too much, one's too little. We'll get one, the one just right in the middle, the Goldilocks zone, so to speak. So anyway, uh, blah, 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 blah. so any, so whatever. So he is looking around. Dave is looking around there in Pennsylvania for a really cool Class C, basically a used one. Although I think there were some new ones over here, but these were, you know, Camping World. Anyway. So he is, uh, then he said he saw a few a couple weeks ago when he was up in Michigan for the schoolie uh, UP there. And uh, he actually liked those ones, but now he's back in Pennsylvania and he's looking at, this is an older coachman here from, I guess, what, the late 80s or something. So he's looking around at some, you know, various vehicles and just trying to uh, figure out what to get. So uh, so my guess is sometime this remaining, the last remaining days of summer, he will probably pick up some sort of a Class A, get rid of Betty the Bounder, and then head out west to... Uh, What's it called? The Panda Property. The Property. The PP. Anyway, I don't know, because yeah, you know, he, I'm sure he wants to go out there for Panda's, for um, Aja's birthday. So I don't know, man. Dave's RV life, uh, you know, it's just, it's been a interesting summer for him. You know, a very change, change is in his head. Change is in his head, and he's still not quite there yet. And the other thing that Dave had to say was uh, the shocking prices. Prices of, Class B's, or excuse me, Class C's are very expensive. So, yeah, which is not news. Everybody's been reporting that. So that is shocking prices. Shocking, shocking. Hey, this channel's called The RV Show USA. Some very interesting stuff on this channel. This was a very interesting discussion there. There's the host there, and there's a particular lawyer from uh, Louisiana. Anyway, they were talking about uh, something that affects a lot of RV buyers, and that is lemon laws, how they are different in every state. And apparently, according to this attorney, uh, the, apparently uh, the best lemon laws in the country are in California and in his home state of Louisiana. But Louisiana, just as of 1st of August, has changed its lemon laws regarding RVs, and uh, it's not to the advantage of buyers. So, very interesting discussion there about uh, the always changing lemon laws. And there, again, it's confusing because every state has different laws, depends on where you buy it, and this and that, and that, and that, and that. So anyway, but they they did seem to come to the conclusion that California has actually got some of the best lemon laws out there. So I don't know. A lot of people like to talk down California, but they got good lemons. I mean, lemon laws. Letters, letters, letters. We got a lot of comments about that certain nomad we don't usually talk about too much anymore that lives in southern, has a house there in southern Illinois. Uh, we're at Wrestling Ernest Hemingway. Uh, logic dictates that if a person doesn't like rain before picking a home base, check to find out whether the weather is like that all the year long. Logic dictates, yeah, that if you want to be bogged down with more repairs, then don't buy a lot of stuff. Blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. Uh, yeah. You know, again, the Midwest of the United States of America, where Illinois is, gets a lot of hot, sticky, humid weather in the summertime. Sometimes they have dry summers and sometimes they have wet summers, but it's usually hot and usually pretty humid. And if you don't like that, then, you know, yeah, you know, again, considering this particular nomad's penchant for chasing 70 all year long, uh, Illinois is not a good place to be because it's it's maybe 70 somewhere in the spring and somewhere in the fall, but most of the summer and most of the winter, it's either much above 70 or much below, right? Barry Cooper says uh, Chrome has mentioned that he was going to add more videos of having his dog uh, cruise in the videos. Viewers are good with just watching the dog. Yeah, that's exactly right. Crone can have a seat somewhere, turn his camera on, and just aim it at Cruzy Bear, and we'd all be good. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, and it's true. It's true. You know, a lot of these nomads with either the cats or Cruzy Poo or uh, what is it? What are the wolf pack there? Uh, uh, Tucker, May May, and Baby what, Martini, whatever its name is, are. They are people, a lot of these people's channels, they're real, half their viewers are watching just for the, the animals, right? Uh, Mike never, never moon, never man, never man, never man, never man. You're right, Dave. The long list of annoyances by uh, certain nomads is, you know, beyond being, you know. Again, what do we, what do we say? Everybody's whining. Everybody's crying about stuff. We see it. Uh, one thing we see on YouTube more, especially with nomads these days, more, you know, not just channels that people travel and everybody, everybody's whining and crying and griping and angry and. I don't want to wear a mask. Oh, the rate's raining too much. Uh, somebody said something nasty about me. Uh, you know, people are really whining a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a, I don't know what it is. It, maybe it's our whole country is like that. Just whiners all over. Uh, Wayne Halliday says, being having a bread truck has nothing to do with getting pulled over. That's crap. You're, you're, if you're legal and obeying the laws, then you won't get a ticket. Simple as that. It's his own fault, Paul Barger, that he got a ticket. And then he has, he's not asking so much for people to pay his fines, but, you know, there's the super chat. And he's doing another live chat as we speak. So he did a live chat yesterday when he's gotten pulled over. And now he's doing a live chat the next day. I, I, he's not saying send me money, but he's probably, you know, that, if you want to throw him some bucks so he can pay his fines, what the hell? <laughs> Again, you know, um, if he wasn't going too fast over the speed limit, I guess he would not have been pulled over in the first place. And then when you get pulled over and they want to see your insurance card and either you don't have it or it's out of date, you know, then you've got another problem on your hands. I don't know, man. I don't know. You got to think about all that stuff. You know, stay, you know st and again, you know, stay below the speed limit or stay at the speed limit or to be very careful about that, especially when you're in small town Idaho. Wow, SC1212 Abel says, Hi Dave, after we leave Pensacola, Florida Sunday, we're headed to North Carolina. We have a summer home on Lake Norman near Mayhew, NC. You should come over for a few days. Lots of cool stuff to do here. Hmm, Lake Norman. Oh, oh that's not far. That's like an hour away. Maybe I will. 58 minutes. <laughs> Down there, that's not even, and then I could just head on down to the Doxinators. That's not that far. It's kind of on the way to the Doxinators place. I don't know. That's certainly doable. Hmm. Loar says, Adam the Woo is back at Disney. This guy didn't fit. But he, did, he never gets tired of repeats and people watching him like his repeats and whatever. I unsubbed from Adam the Woo, the Daily Woo. I just, I got tired of Disney, Disney, Disney over again and again and again and again and again. And I, you know, hey. I check in on him once in a while, and every now and then I find an interesting video from Mr. Wu, but I've just gotten tired of it. You know, I mean, I'm just... Ugh. <laughs> CVB says, just ran across a documentary from 1995 called Ernest Borgnine on the Bus. He outfitted a big bus and traveled around the Midwest meeting people. Sweet. There's a channel called Ernest Borgnine's Bus that has more content. I have watched numerous videos on that channel. It's very interesting. I think he had one of those big GMC kind of moon buses, you know, with the big windows on it. It's pretty neat. Uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, just Ernest Borgnine on his bus. You can find it all over YouTube. The Little Prairie Pets. Holly Beth says he was fantastic in the Beside Adventure. Marty and Mikhail's Navy. Absolutely. We love Ernest Borgnine. Oh, yeah. Mega Van, Mega, Mega Van Mike says School UP up there in the Upper Peninsula. Michigan was a great time. I highly recommend it for next year. The dates are already set. Very cool. Yeah, so plan on that every year now. I think it's pretty neat. I'm, I'm liking seeing people getting out of Arizona and the Southwest and actually seeing the rest of the country, you know? A Dennis Reader, I guess, was con was a little bit perturbed that he thought that I was saying that uh, those cops pulled over, the cop pulled over Paul Barger and his bread truck just simply because they were curious about whether he had a, something interesting in his vehicle. No, I didn't, I didn't mean to, I maybe that, you know, I said that if you're driving around in a bread truck, a lot of times cops will kind of single them out and be suspicious of them. But I was not saying that this particular cop, this Idaho State Trooper, was pulling over Paul Barger just because of that. Obviously, the cop had reason to pull Paul, Bar Paul Barger over, and that was because he was speeding, allegedly. 
Dennis says they just don't want to pull it, pull you over. He was speeding. They didn't just pull you over for nothing. Yeah, well, I we I said that in the video. You know, it wasn't you know anyway. The questions were just were were just the officer trying to be friendly. Yeah. I mean, but again, as Paul said, you know, sometimes they're trying to fish for information like what you got. What are you carrying in the back there? You know, cops don't pull over bread trucks for nothing. This is ridiculous. Police officers are just trying to do their job and and go home the same way they left. Don't speed. And I don't care what kind of a car you're in. Well, they do say that certain kinds of cars tend to be pulled over by cops more often. But again, driving around in a bread truck. You know, I mean, you know, I they're a little more suspicious of that than I guess if you putz around in a smart car. I don't know. Finally, Mr. Rockford says Paul should know that you get more honey uh, with than you, you know than you do with you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. Being polite to a police officer many times gets you out of a ticket. Paul deserves what he got for his actions. So Paul didn't want to talk to the cop and was being kind of standoffish, and he said that in his video. And then the cops slapped him with a couple tickets. And they were legitimate. I, I was, you know, legitimate. I mean, he was speeding, allegedly. And he didn't have his insurance information with him, allegedly. So, you know, they were legitimate things. But if, yeah, you're right. If Paul had been nice to the cop. <laughs> and... <laughs> I don't know. Charles Tate says, why on earth would a bread truck be suspicious? A.C. Gillespie says, ever see up in smoke? No, I haven't. All right, folks, that ought to do it for today. Letters and more for the 18th of uh, August 2021. Thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday vlog under.